Hi friends, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Well, maybe you're like me. It's early February and you're knee deep in garden planning, seed purchasing, and really finalizing all your orders for things like dahlias, lilies, and gladiolas. And I just completed my personal order for dahlias and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to really talk about all the different dahlia forms or classifications rather, but really focus in on what makes each form unique. You know, which ones are good for cutting? Which ones bring in the pollinators? Which ones are great for compote designs? Because there's so many dahlias on the market. I think I read somewhere that there's over 20,000 dahlia varieties currently. That's a lot of dahlias to choose from. And in a way, that's a good thing. And in a way, I think it can be a bad thing because if you think to yourself, well, I want a peach dahlia, it's kind of hard to just sort through all the different peach dahlias out there. But if you know you want a peach dahlia that's good for cutting, or if you know you want a tall one that's good for pollinators, maybe you know you're gonna be doing a wedding this year and you want a peach dahlia, you can really narrow down the search just by selecting a certain form. So today we're gonna to talk about all the different dahlia forms. I'll show pictures on the screen of ones that I've grown. And so you can see them in arrangements also. I'll put different designs on the screen. So let's just dive right into the list with two of my favorite forms. We have formal and informal decorative dahlia, and pretty much they're defined just as how the name sounds. Formal decorative dahlias have dense double flower heads. They have these broad, flat, evenly spaced petals with rounded or slightly pointed tips, and these petals gradually recurve toward the stem. I really feel like decorative dahlias specifically are refined and classic beauties that add elegance to the garden and sophistication to arrangements. Their formal neat appearance really just lends itself to being a crisp focal flower. And I think they just really have lots of class. Now in juxtaposition with those formal decorative dahlias, we have the informal decorative dahlias. And these dahlias often house those big dinner plate varieties that have wavy, curled, or even what I would say is a ruffled look to their petals. They have really a softer, more relaxed appearance, and they bring lots of personality and pizzazz to flower arrangements. And if I had to think of an adjective to describe this particular classification, I would say romantic, right? These are the dahlias that we see used all the time in weddings. Cafe au lait, probably the most famous dahlia of all, at least currently, is an informal decorative dahlia. But there's also varieties that are similar to cafe au lait. If you wanna kinda of branch out from that variety, you could try labyrinth. That's a beautiful one with this peach and pink tones. You could try breakout. But once again, if you know you want a big dahlia with a double flower head, lots and lots of petals, lots and lots of personality, and you want it in say a pink, you could put all those terms into your search engine and really narrow it down. Next up, we have a few classes that I think can be a little bit polarizing and these ones all fall under the umbrella of cactus dahlias. So we have straight cactus, semi-cactus, incurved cactus, and then my favorite, laciniated cactus. And I'm not really sure why this group is so polarizing, but it does seem like you either love cactus dahlias or you kind of dislike them. But I would say there's probably a cactus dahlia for everyone, because while I'm not really drawn to the straight cactus or the incurved or even the semi-cactus, for me, the laciniated cactus are ones that are really worth growing. But let's go through each form individually because they're all uniquely different and special. So let's start out with the semi-cactus. Semi-cactus dahlias have double flower heads and they have pointy petals that are broad at the base. And this is what's really different between a semi-cactus and a straight cactus. It has more of a broad base. They're straight or incurved petals and they reflex toward the stem in a regular and uniform arrangement. Every time I see a semi-cactus dahlia, I think I'm looking at a sea urchin or a sea anemone. They really have that appearance to them. 
But what I feel like makes this form uniquely special is they're very versatile garden plants, but even more importantly, I feel like their blooms are a little less likely to be damaged by strong winds and strong rains, which is something that I always deal with here. So if you're in kind of a climate where it rains all the time, you get a lot of really bad storms, and you like the look of a cactus dahlia over all the other varieties that we're gonna speak on, I would personally recommend semi-cactus. So straight cactus dahlias have fully double blooms, and the main difference here is that they have straight, narrow petals, uniform in length, but really their petals look like tubes. While a semi-cactus has more of a broad petal coming to a point, a true straight cactus, or sometimes people just call them cactus, they're much more tubular. So if you like that look, if you want kind of a totally tubular dahlia, does anyone say that anymore? Now I'm probably showing my age. I would go with a straight cactus. Now the next variety is incurved cactus. And unfortunately, I feel like these are really prone to wind and rain damage, but if they weren't, I would continue to grow them. And the pictures that you're gonna be seeing on the screen are from a few years ago. And I did stop growing incurved cactus because I felt like they just took on too much damage from the wind and the rain that we get here in Southern Pennsylvania. But these ones are once again, fully double blooms that really kind of look like a bad case of bedhead. They once again have narrow pointed petals, uniform in length and arrangement, and they either curve up toward the bloom face or they can arc down and then up, and they may also swirl horizontally around the bloom circumference. So they really have kind of a zany appearance and they bring a lot of whimsy to the garden. But I do think it's important to note that if you live in an area where the weather is extreme, you probably will see some damage to the petals. So next up, we have my personal favorite cactus variety. We have Liciniated Cactus. And I've heard it said that sometimes the end or the tip of the petal on a Liciniated Cactus looks like a snake's tongue. It's basically split. And at that split, it kind of twists and curls. So it really gives it a fun, but really a frilly effect to the bloom. And I'll show you some pictures here of Myrtle's Folly, which is my personal favorite Liciniated Dahlia. But really, these are dramatic dahlias. That's the best word I can think of to describe them. Very, very dramatic. So they're perfect for specialty arrangements and really bringing excitement to your floral designs. So thus far, all the dahlias that we've talked about would be really great for event work, weddings, anniversaries, birthday parties, something where you're going to cut the dahlia and it's only gonna need to look good for a short amount of time. But say you're growing dahlias specifically to sell them. I would definitely recommend one or all of the next three forms. And those forms are ball, miniature ball, and pawn-pawn. And these all look pretty similar. Ball dahlias have fully double flowers that are sphere-shaped or slightly flattened at the face. Generally, the petals grow in a spiral pattern and have blunt or rounded tips. The blooms on a ball dahlia must be 3.5 inches or greater to be in this class. And in contrast, if it's a miniature ball, it would be smaller in size at two to three and a half inches in diameter. So they really look almost identical to one another, just the ball is bigger than the miniature ball. Both have a really, really long vase life. When conditioned properly, you can expect at least seven to 10 days in the vase and they can also be out of water for a short period of time. So if you're making grab and go bunches, ball, miniature ball, and pawn pawn are definitely the dahlia for you. So now let's talk about those pom pom dahlias. They are the smallest in size at about two inches in diameter. The petals are full all the way back to the stem. So they form a nearly perfect ball. And these are really kind of dainty flowers. I love them to just kind of tuck here and there into designs. But also if you're doing anything like floral jewelry, so floral bracelets, flower crowns, the pawn pawn dahlia is really your best dahlia for those applications.
Now let's talk about two forms that I think bring a lot of nice diversity to designs. Say you really love dahlias, you're really passionate about them, and you know you want to make a lot of designs with just dahlias. I would say plant some of these varieties for some nice kind of variance in form. So we're going to talk about the water lily dahlia, which is one I absolutely adore and also the Stellar Dahlia, which this variety really looks like a star. I think it could have been called the Star Dahlia. But Stellar Dahlias have smaller petals towards the center and longer petals towards the back of the bloom. Their sharply edged petals recurve toward the stem and they're often spaced farther apart than formal decorative dahlias. Stellar dahlias are really eye-catching in the garden and I really feel like they provide a bold, once again, also dramatic look to flower designs. I really do like stellar dahlias, but I love water lily dahlias. These dahlias are so delicate and demure in nature. I really just think they add a lot of elegance into the garden and into the vase. So they're really aptly named. They really look like floating water lilies. They have symmetrical flower heads that I would say look like flat saucers. They have four to seven rows of open faced petals with a closed domed center. And like I said, it's really about how delicate these feel. You know, it's nice to tuck a few water lily dahlias into a design just to add a bit of quiet beauty. That's what I would say these dahlias are. They're quietly beautiful. And of course, being named water lily dahlias, they look right at home floating in a bowl of water. Two more dahlias that are also great for adding diversity into design work are the peony dahlia and also the anemone flowering dahlia. Now, different than the stellar and the water lily forms that we just talked about, the peony one has an open center. So not only is this great for adding diversity into your designs, but also it's loved by the bees and the butterfly or sorry, but also it's loved by the bees and the butterflies. But one thing that I've noticed about peony dahlias is, let me know if you think I'm really totally off on this, because I definitely could be, but they don't look anything like peonies to me. They really look more like zinnias. Let me know whether you agree with that or not. But peony dahlias have two, but no more than five rows of petals surrounding an open disc center. The petals closest to the disc may be twisted or curled. And like I said, they really just don't look like peonies to me. Do they look like peonies to you? But it's definitely a fun dahlia to add into the garden. Not one of my personal favorites, but let me know what you think about it. Now let's move on to anemone flowering dahlias. And I've seen an increase in popularity of these dahlias over just maybe the last, say, eight years, I would say. These have one or more row of petals surrounding a center of elongated tubular disc florets. These disc florets create a domed pincushion appearance reminiscent of scabiosa. Their unique centers really bring diversity to event florals and elaborate compote designs. Unfortunately, and this is just me talking from personal experience, I don't feel like they have a good vase life at all but please let me know in the comments section if you've grown anemone flowering dahlias and feel differently. Maybe it's just the specific cultivars I've grown and maybe I need to try some more. But it really is a cool dahlia that doesn't really look like a dahlia. It looks more like a scabiosa, like a double echinacea, or if you've ever grown Zinderella zinnias, it looks just like that. Well, funny enough, the next two dahlias on our list aren't wonderful cut flowers, but they're my personal favorite dahlias. And maybe that's a little bit ironic that as someone that sells cut flowers, I actually prefer the ones that are better left in the garden. But the forms that are really near and dear to my heart are colorette. That's my number one favorite dahlia form and single, and there's also a minion single, which is just a much smaller version of a single. 
but a collaret dahlia is an open single dahlia. So it has that beautiful open yellow disc center loved by the bees, the butterflies. I even saw hummingbirds coming to my collaret dahlias, but what makes them so special is that they have a collar of petaloids that surrounds that disc center. So it really just adds that something special, that something unique. I do not see enough people growing collaret dahlias. If you're watching this video and you're wondering what dahlia to add this year to bring the pollinators in, some interest into the garden, something just a little bit special, grow a collaret dahlia. I promise you, you won't regret it. What I've also noticed about collaret dahlias is that even though they don't have a really long vase life, they last really long in the garden. At least they appear to last so long because they're constantly pumping out blooms. So as long as you keep on top of deadheading a collaret or a single, it is going to be covered in flowers. And I'm talking about covered all growing season. Now, if you can't get your hands on a collaret dahlia, don't worry, try to get your hands on at least a single dahlia because they are also loved by the bees, the butterflies, the moths and the hummingbirds. So once again, these are the dahlias, the ones with the open centers, the ones that are a little bit less showy that really bring the life into the garden. If you're someone that likes to sit out in the garden with your tea or your coffee in the morning, and you like to look at not just the flowers, but all of the pollinators that are in your garden, I would highly recommend any dahlia with an open center. But a single is really the most basic form of dahlia, but I still find it absolutely gorgeous. So we're talking here about an open-faced dahlia with a single row of uniform, evenly spaced petals in a flat plane surrounding that beautiful round yellow disc flower in the center. One other thing to note about single dahlias is that they often have really cool foliage. So if you want a dahlia with dark foliage, or maybe you're just looking for a different leaf structure, start kind of, you know, making your way through some of the single dahlias, because that's where you'll find a lot of cool foliage as well. Next up, we have two forms that I've never personally grown before, but this year I had the pleasure of seeing them in a friend's garden. I fell in love with them and now I've been searching the internet so I can buy at least one tuber of each form. So we have the orchid dahlia, which is so beautiful, and then even more beautiful in my eye, the orchette dahlia. So an orchid dahlia kind of looks like a bicycle spoke. You know, if we had a pedal like this, but then we curved the pedal inwards so that it kind of almost looked like a tube, but you could still see that it was a flat pedal at some point that it just kind of curved in onto itself. That's kind of what an orchid dahlia looks like to me. Once again, a single dahlia, beautiful yellow disc center there. So we know it's great for the bees, the butter, butterflies, and the hummingbirds. So definitely orchid is one that I would add onto your list if you're passionate about pollinators. Now, I think what I need to grow and what I've been saving up for is a lot of orchid dahlias. So basically it's a combination of the orchid dahlia. You have kind of those petals that kind of curve onto themselves, but then you have those petaloids, that collar of petaloids on the orchid. So just another kind of layer of interest to the dahlia. Definitely both varieties I'm excited to grow this year and share with all of you. Definitely let me know if you've grown either of those, what cultivar do you like? And I'll search that out on the internet. Now we're coming to the end of the list and basically we have two forms that are kind of a catch-all for dahlias that don't fit nicely into any of these other forms. We have novelty open and novelty fully double. So basically the best way that I can describe it is a new dahlia comes about, which is happening all the time, right? And they really don't fit nicely 
into these other classifications, but they're separated by what their center looks like. If it's an open center dahlia, it's going to fall into novelty open. If it's a closed center, it's going to fall into that novelty fully double. And of course the novelty fully double are also double dahlias. So that's really the main difference. And I don't think I've grown any, but I've grown a lot of dahlias from seed that don't quite look like any of the other forms. So maybe those varieties would go into novelty open or novelty fully double. And then finally, we have all the micros. We have micro, micro orchid, micro orchid, micro novelty open, micro novelty fully double. It kind of goes on and on and on. But basically, these are really small blooms, micro blooms, if you will two inches or smaller that look like that parent classification. So a micro orchette would look just like an orchette, but it would just be much smaller, under two inches in diameter. But that brings us to the end of the list already. I can't believe we went through all the forms. Now, these forms are always changing as new dahlias come onto the market and different classifications are created, updated, and changed. I use the American Dahlia Society's handbook for reference, and I'll also link to their website in the description section below, because if you watch this video 10 years from now, the forms could definitely be different because they're always changing. So I'll make sure and link that website in the description section below. I'll also link on their website where you can search out different dahlias and find out what form they are, or you can just put in a form and it'll pull out a list for you. It's a really, really helpful resource. Well, friends, I wanna wish you a great day. Please let me know what dahlias you're growing this year. Um, I'm just excited to grow more seed dahlias, to be honest with you, and more dahlias with open centers. That's what I'm really excited about this year. Well, I wanna wish you a great day and happy gardening. Bye.